actions and changes in the lifestyle. Because you have turned your back on me and you have not heeded my warnings, your country will face disasters and a financial chaos that will take away your freedom. The one world people and their puppet leaders will take over your country and you will be defeated and exiled as Israel was because of your worship of other gods. These gods are lust, money, fame, and material things which are against my commandments, when you should be worshiping only me. Be prepared, America, to meet your fate, or you will be reaping the punishment for sowing the sins of your passion. So, you know, I don't think it could be more direct than that. In fact, he explains, it's such a fascinating book, <laughs> but he explains how the, the Assyrians, the people that took over the Israelites, it's the same part of the world of where the terrorists came from. Today. It goes that this, and they were known for their brutality and torture. So it's even the same people the Lord used to uh, bring judgment against both of our countries. Yes, it's nine of these kind of things. Yeah, it's, it's a very fascinating book, but if you don't get the book, um, certainly go on the internet and see Jonathan Kahn. And when you see the visuals, <laughs> Of the, of the trees, the sycamore, everything, and John Dashiell and Obama and all of them saying these things. And, I mean, it, it can't only be divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he was able to put this together because he never would figure it out otherwise. John Conning? Conn. Jonathan Conn. Jonathan Conn. I think he said a jersey. And he said um, that he gave us actually an autographed copy. And he says, uh, I think he's going to become Kappa because he's doing communion services. I was a Jewish rabbi. So I, I say a little fire for him. I he's going to be on the, on the hooding team. <laughs> okay, did you want to finish up? Jonathan Kahn, right? Yeah. Okay. No, it's just A. A. Okay. The A, it's just A. Well, she said like I don't know. I'm going to go to five. We have to five. Okay. All right. I'm going to speak like 10 minutes real fast. And I'm going to take a little time for questions. Um, the interesting thing, uh, the reason I want to end this kind of on something hopeful for you, because I know it's a lot of... Correct you are hopeful, Carol. Yeah, I know that. But something uh, encouraging for you. Um, most of you here are the prayer warriors of the family, just as I, I think I can assume that. That's usually the case. And sometimes we get discouraged that our prayers don't get answered. But I want to tell you um, that the Lord does hear prayers, and sometimes it's at the very last minute. Uh, one example was my father. I prayed for him for 45 years. He was a wonderful man. Um, that is 95. He died at 95 three years ago. And it's really amazing because he really thought, you're dead, you're dead. He didn't like the church because it just wanted your money. Um, he didn't want to die. And he's terrified to die, yeah. <laughs> His motto is the day you sit down is the day you die. So at 94, he was still climbing the tree. <laughs> he was still driving, too. I'll just tell you this one quick story. He was, uh, he went to a stop sign, and the officer stopped him and says, you know, uh, Pat, what's your hurry? He said, officer, I'm 90 years old, and I don't have much time left, and I don't want to waste it at a stop sign. <laughs> so he, uh, he actually uh, let him go. <laughs> but anyway, so I thought he was a very lovable guy. And like, you know, people say, well, I, I'm a good person, but you know, you still need this relationship with the Lord. Being just a good person, you could be like a social worker. That's what Mother Teresa said. You know, if you're not doing it for the Lord, you're like a social worker. But anyway, so I'm just going to relate a few instances of how, what the Lord did to save my father's soul. So he was in the last four months of his life, and um, it was June of 2009, and he went into a coma from congestive heart failure. They didn't think he'd come out. 
He came out five days later, he had a heart attack and died. So I said, Dad, uh, did you see Jesus? Did you go through the tunnel? Did you see a light? Did you see anything, you know? He said no, but all he talked about the whole following week. I don't want to go back to the basement. I don't like the people there. I said, oh, dear, this isn't too good. He was in a little red infectious box they have on the wall in the hospital. He was even seeing demons coming out of there. So I was really a wreck. In fact, um, I, I stayed with him 28 straight hours in intensive care because I really thought they were going to do him in because they really were very unhappy. He wouldn't sign a do not resuscitate order. And if they if he had signed it, he would have died and he wouldn't have had this experience for a chance, you know? So anyway, then the kidney shut down. They said they wouldn't come back. They came back. Now he's in rehab and to make a long story short, he's now it really I can see it's the end. So I said to my priest friend, just come and see if we can get some confession out of him, you know? <laughs> so you have to make a book in a sense, uh, you know, he's I see Father in the hall, come on in, go, oh, you're just passing by, did you ever meet my dad, you know? As it was not like a child. So anyway, he comes in and, and I said to my father, uh, or I said to Father, I said, uh, I'm going to the ladies' room, you know, so I come back 10 minutes later and Father's giving me a thumbs up, you know, and a sign. And I said, oh my God, he went, so my father says to me, Oh, well, that didn't take too long, you know, 10 minutes for 70 years. <laughs> but the point is, he went and he enrolled him in the scapular. This was really my wow. nice and, I, and he enrolled him while I was there so I could say the prayers too. So that was wonderful. And I walked with uh, Father to the parking garage, and would you believe the license plate on the car next to Father said, Amazing Grace on it. I said, Dad, this was the day of Amazing Grace. So he died. Uh, actually, 10 days later, it was the very, that confession was the last he spoke. So that'll tell you what the Lord did to save him. So now, uh, the morning he died, I, I walked in and, and the scapula was missing uh, from his bed rail. So I took mine off and I laid it on his chest under his gown and he chose to die in that half hour. I took my mother home and my brother was with him. And my brother said that the scapular that had been under his gown got in his hand, and as he died, he laid the scapular on my brother's hand. Now, my brother's got the demons of addiction with alcohol, and so um, he, he's the one that needed the help next. <laughs> but anyway, he died, and uh, so John was on the retreat, and I called him up, and I said, go in the chapel and see if there's going to be any words from my father. Because many times at funerals, for those who read the messages, you'll see there's sometimes a message from either Jesus or the person at funerals. Mm -hmm. But this is my father, the Lord pulled out all the stops on this because he's been ongoing. Mm -hmm. So he's on retreat and he said, I see Camille, I should say Camille was a man's name in Belgium where he was born as a much younger soul body. Thank you, John, for listening to me. I'm happy my last struggle is over because I really could not be active anymore. I am in a transition spiritual state, but Carol's prayers and the scapular save me from hell. I will be going to purgatory, and I thank Carol for getting the priest to have my confession. I was greeted by Jesus and Mary at my death, and we did pray for my soul as I was dying. I want to comfort Lydia for putting up with my health problems, and forgive me if I offended you in life. As John mentioned, forgiveness is a real big issue. I want to thank Dick for seeing me in my life today. So then, at the funeral, I'm so happy to see all the people who came to my funeral. I then they had tears in my eyes as my brother Bill gave his eulogy. I saw the same life for you when I died that he talked about. And he's just giving his love to everybody and thanking all the people. Came to the funeral, and he's going to watch over us. So now I thought this is the end. But every time we've had a mass offered for him, he's come with another message. And some pretty interesting. Uh, I'm just going to read a few little facts. All right, next one. I thank you. Yeah. I thank you for all the masses you have said for my soul. It was this anticipation of graces outside of time that allowed me into heaven so soon. So this was, was really beautiful because 
you know, you're outside of time now, so the Lord already knew the masses that were going to be said and apply them. Mm -hmm. Because I should say, he died on a Saturday. 20 masses. On, on Tuesday, my friend uh, called me, who has the gift of knowing where souls are, and she said, Jesus just told her that my father is now with him in heaven. Oh. Three days he was in purgatory. Oh so you see the enormous mercy of God, you know? So, in volume 60, I have kind of an old story with a lot of the messages, but I'm just going to do some little snippets because there's some of interest. He said, this scene was when I attended Mass earlier in my life. I'm sorry I was not a better example in leading people to Mass. Soon you are right in thinking I have now been assigned the task of getting our relatives back to Mass for the salvation of their souls. I thank Carol for helping me in my physical and spiritual needs. Now it's my turn to return the paper. Then he said, next one. Hello, John. I want to let you know I closed the door at church to prepare you for hearing me at communion time. We did remember the door. We just heard it cl click close, but nobody was there. As you know, I have been getting down in terms of tension with their light, which is easy for me to turn on. With these signs, the Lord has enabled me to give you some communication. And they have a china cabinet, you know, the ones the central light she had touched, and they go low, medium, high. He turns us on all the time. And it's for the benefit of my son in law who needs to, you know, shape up. And, um, and, it's, and it's really kind of funny because one night they got it actually on video camera. 11 times he turned the light on. My daughter turned it off. She'd walk away, blink, 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 he goes right back on. So my son in law sees this, he believes it, but he, he's trying to not the for him. <laughs> anyway, um, this was kind of cute. I added a request for a sign by having a chime to play a song at my funeral. This was a weekday mass, and at 6 o'clock, which they never ring the bells during the week, uh, the ringing, here I am, Lord, the song from your funeral. Because my mother was feeling bad, everything happened at my daughter's, and she was feeling left bad after 70 years of marriage, you know? <laughs> then, um, this is cute. I understand your question about my change in my love for God because I'm ashamed that I did not love God more in my earlier life. I must admit that if it were not for your prayers, I may not have been allowed a deathbed conversion. It was the mercy of God that saved me in your master's life today that further allowed me into heaven. I was in purgatory briefly, and it was very difficult to suffer purification there. I understand now that to come to heaven you need to give up all of your earthly desires and seek only God's love. Once you experience God's love, all you want to do is share it with everyone. This is what is driving me to help souls in the family. <coughs> I won't finish reading it all because I want to just hit a few high facts. This was cute. I remember the Palm Sunday service I went to years ago, but everything then was in Latin. The music at the mass was beautiful, but I must admit the heavenly music is much better. So that was nice. Oh, this was kind of cute, because you wonder, do they really know what's happening here on earth? They do, believe me. Here, this is kind of funny. It's hard to believe how many masses you can't fetch for me, because you're always coming to another one. I am so grateful for all of your efforts on my behalf. But it is spring now, and I am thinking about how you people are going to keep my garden going. It takes plenty of digging. You need to keep adding organic things in order to keep it loose. If you're going to keep the house, you have to cut the grass, clean up the pine cones and the other limbs. I'm not there to take care of it myself, so you have to be my arms and legs. I love that garden when I was on earth as if it was a part of me. And I'm happy you could all attend the mass. I look forward to talking to all of you. You know how much I like to talk. That's true. I was grateful that you helped Lydia in getting some hearing aids. My mother is shouting at her. Oh, she won't wear them, but anyway. Um, so then she said, Happy Easter. I miss you all at your Sunday dinner. I must say that heaven is in celebration mode more than normal as you celebrate Jesus' resurrection. This life after death is more than I ever expected, and there truly is a promise that one day we will see each other with our bodies. I want to thank you all for picking up the yard, taking care of your mother. I miss you at the family gathering, but I am praying for all of you in heaven. I can't stop thanking you for all of these masses for me. You don't know how much I am grateful to God and all of you who have enabled me to be here. 
This is where I have a lot of payback from my blessings. I love you all. <coughs> and um, this was kind of funny. <laughs> my sister and I went to the cemetery on uh, Memorial Day and had planted seven begonias, one white one and six pink ones, and made a cross. We went back on Father's Day to water them, and uh, the six pink ones were stolen, dug up. So he says, I was watching the people who were stealing the flowers from my grave, <laughs> and I thought they were pretty cheap not to buy their own flowers. <laughs> it's definitely rude to steal from a grave. I'm sorry that I will not be celebrating Father's Day at your picnic, but wish me a happy Father's Day ever anyway. I love you all, and I'm still moving around to let you know I'm still active. <laughs> this was kind of interesting. Hello, everybody. I'm still here trying to help all of you, but getting people back to church is not an easy job. <laughs> Tell me about it. If you see me repeating things in my business, it's because you are not listening to what the Lord wants you to do. I admit I wasn't any better when I lived on the earth, but now I think differently when the Lord wants me to do something. I was used to people doing what I asked, but I see why the Lord is constantly nudging people because many are ignoring him. I am also being frustrated by having to accept that I cannot change people's free will. I pray for all of you and I will be persistent in doing what I can to lead you on the right path to heaven. And then he talked to her in the shrine and handed the martyrs. This whole concept of martyrdom is not anything I understood when I lived on the earth. I heard of the faith, but I did not know or appreciate what they suffered on earth. In my little faith, I doubt that I could have died for such a cause. But now that I am in heaven, I will do whatever the Lord asks of me. God bless all of you who have had a deep faith in Jesus throughout your whole life. These martyrs have a higher place in heaven than I am because of their great faith. You should all strive for the higher places in heaven. The Lord has shown and judged before that you know there's seven levels in heaven and the people at the top is the apostles, the next level is the martyrs, and um, goes down from there. But the people in the higher levels can visit those in the lower levels because the lower ones don't go higher. So if you're at the top, you can visit everybody. So all these social people, try to the right people. Okay, and I'm just going to, I'm well, sure he's got a lot of these messages, but I'm just going to end on this one that, you know, as you can see the flavor, it's been mostly for the family. Well, that's the one he's really concerned, and uh, this one that uh, woke me up a bit here, too. This was on the anniversary of his death, September 26th. Um, hello, everybody. You were curious before I was trying to get your attention with Sharon's necklace. Her necklace had fallen off. I told you then that time was getting short for converting your lives, especially those in the family who are not going to Sunday Mass. Today, I am telling you to get your spiritual lives in order with Jesus because the day of the warning is getting close. So that's the first you mentioned anything like this. <clears throat> um, I am preparing you for this day because it was quite shocking for me that they went off here. Did you have another we only got five, five minutes. We only got five minutes. Go, go, go. This one. They're not going to slow down. <laughs> John Dixon, right, and you're writing them down. Carol is reading. Yeah, Carol doesn't get messages. Oh. She's reading the messages I had about her father. Okay. Today I'm telling you to get your spiritual life in order with Jesus because the day of the morning is getting close. I'm preparing you for this day because it was quite shocking for me to see my judgment to hell when I died for a short time. Once Carol asked me about going to confession, I wanted to do it, but on the next day. The one time I, he always said he was dying, I said, you want me to get a priest? And the one time he says, maybe tomorrow. I said, well, you know, a little crack of the wall here. I thank her for her prayers, bringing the priest to hear my confession. This is why I want our family members to be prepared for this coming morning so they are not as shocked at their life review as I was. By waking up now to see how they need to be closer to Jesus and attending Sunday Mass, then they will be prepared to face Jesus at their judgment and their life for you. I love all of my family and I am praying for all of you. So, 
real speaking. Yeah. Through, through so what he gave me. You know, and when you read them on the internet, you'll get an understanding of, of him a little bit. But I guess we want to just take like two minutes and yep. a couple of questions. Um, we got five minutes of question time. I have a question. Have you heard anything about uh, um, Gregorian masses? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, literally they can control your mind. No, I mean, it's not more like they put it in without their conscience. If they don't give, uh, uh, it's a problem there. <laughs> See, when people take it, they're kind of giving it a sense, but they may not know the seriousness of that. But if once they learn in the warning about the seriousness of it, and if they've taken it, they will be able to remove it before the time of beginning the tribulation. After the tribulation, no way. They can't remove it. And then, like I was asking the boss, that's somebody in the nursing home, he doesn't know they come sick in their body, or a little child. Then you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have uh, consent. The whole idea is consent, like a mortal sin. So you have to get total consent. There wouldn't be There wouldn't be. Um, you know, and how because of it, you know. And more genetic, like, And I'm, I'm taking different people, that's why. Yes. It absolutely talks about uniting with your family before, during, and after the warning. My family in Ohio and Florida, they're not going to church. Do I move there and try and convert them? You'll have to work out your family. So be six weeks of time for conversion, the best I can give you, I think that's the best time to try and get your family together. That's what our Lord was recommending. It doesn't mean that we absolutely have to do it. I mean, it's a choice, you know. But on the other hand, that would be an ideal time if you wanted to have them all at the same record. The best I can give you is because it's not a mandate. Yeah, it's not, it's not a mandate. It's just that that would be nice to have all your family together. Yes. Why does the church and other people in the church give us the idea that the chastisement is shortly after the warning and they tell you put black on your windows? Put it oh, that's for the judgment so that you don't look at the judgment. It's like lots of white. And we're going to be here, though. Yeah, many people are, are going to be lifted up. There will be some in caves, maybe, that won't be that. But I um, don't it's like a bad shoulder. There are 50 plus markers. Yeah. So well, that's like the people too. Have your candle, have your holy water, yeah. have your rosary. I know candles, other people have. Candles. I can only give you what I have. I can't speak for other okay. people's mouth. What about if you're. What about if. What about all the other religions? What about if you're not Catholic? Basically, what I told you before, when you come, yeah. assuming they live to the time of the warning, <laughs> when they come, they will see Jesus and they'll know they can only get to heaven through Jesus no matter what they believe. That's the best I can give you. Yeah. 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 When do you think the warning will happen? What's your um, I wouldn't say it in my messages that no one will know the day of the warning. That's very cool. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the tribulation, when the comet is just cycling. Yeah, during the, the three days of darkness, like I mentioned, what I was given, yeah, what I was given, I, I think I explained this before, what I was given is that the angels would lift us up into the air, not the rapture, but lift us up into the air, because this would be at the very end of the tribulation, and um, we would be protected from being killed by the comet. That was the whole purpose of right. that. And when you said that, I thought, well, why should I have this tarp picture and all this stuff? Well, that was, I don't know how to answer you. I don't, I don't know what I have. Yeah, I, right. I, I tried it well, to get into why, because I don't know how to answer you. But the whole point is that that's the time when he's going to have all the evil ones cast in the house. That's oh, the fun thing of the earth. Bring the three, bring the three days. Everything is dead. Exactly, exactly. My dad, the, uh, the spiritual director or the church work on the church. Yeah, I didn't have a spiritual director. Um, to be honest with you, there were, I'm just going to get into this real quick. There were three things they didn't want me to talk about. One was the thousand year reign of the earth piece, the description of the earth piece, and then thing about um, um, the, the popes and the popes. Those are the three things I was told not to talk about, so I can't talk to you about those subjects. But um, the rest of the that was okay. <laughs> they didn't really restrict me on that. But why why don't they? I think at the base of your question is why don't the priests talk about the end times? I believe they weren't taught about it in their training and stuff. Yeah, that's what they tell us. That's what they tell us. And as a matter of fact, the, the the commission that had me that what you made they didn't even believe in the RP, even though it was given in Canada. That's why. For a lot of us, even within our 
Well, don't forget it. The scripture says what I've hit, hidden from the learned and the, the, and the wise, I revealed to the little ones. Right. But I'm um, just saying, I was wondering whether you get a fallback from that. Oh, um, I can say when I go out and talk, not all the priests are happy with the message. So sometimes I have to talk in other than churches. That's what you mean. But there are some that are all 